Cyberpunk is amazing, but not in the way this usually goes. In Cyberpunk's case, it's amazing how this game can be so good and so bad at the same time. The game itself is good, but when you see what a glitchy and buggy mess it is, you can't call the game a masterpiece. To its defense, from day one up until I got to play the game, they fixed plenty of the problems. Still, they have a long way until the game is ready. Problems weren't rare. In one gaming session, I don't have enough fingers to count the amount of problems I had with the game. The only good part is that most of the glitches and bugs aren't game breaking. They take you out of the immersion, but at least they don't break the game. Also, we were promised much more from CD Projekt Red, and that stuff isn't present in the game. You can't buy a new apartment or do hobby related activities, the free time activities from the trailer are misleading. The stuff that appears there is mostly from cutscenes and missions in the game. You can't do that stuff in your free time. Even when you go back to a bar to have a drink, you can only shop for the drink, and instead of an animation of V drinking, the beverage just goes into your inventory. And as for the roller coaster ride, it's more of a secret activity than an actual activity put on the map. You have to repair the fuse box and then you can ride the roller coaster. But at least you get plenty of side missions, each with a consistent story. So while the promised side activities aren't present, at least you get a laundry list of activities to do outside of main missions, meaning side missions. And each side mission has its own story, with cutscenes and thorough dialogue. Another promise CDPR didn't keep was the police system. They said it would be very advanced, and that you could even bribe cops. The gameplay doesn't reflect that. Police arrest you if you just stand close to them, and if you jump into a car and drive one street away, they won't be chasing after you. The police system was so bad that day one editions had cops spawning inside V's apartment. Another lie that we were told is with the different paths you can take in the game. You could be a nomad, a street kid or a corporate. The options are there when you start the game. Problem is, the paths aren't different from each other. The only difference is that you get a few different dialogue options and a few specific missions. In Rust, the three paths are actually the same path. Character creation, while it has indeed plenty of options, isn't like it was advertised. There are more areas to customize than in other games, true, but presets aren't that many per area. Also, it bothers me that in a world where you can change your body part easily, the way you create your character at the beginning of the game is the way your character will look like the whole game. You can't even change the haircut later on. You can't equip jewelry on your character. It's hard to find cool looking clothes. And you can't add customizations like you see on NPCs. You can't have a shiny metal arm, nor metal components on your neck. Customization is limited. Not just to what they advertised but for how many options they missed from the in-game options. You can't be taller or shorter, more muscular or skinnier, but at least you can choose at the beginning of the game if you want a small penis or a big penis, right? Okay, not gonna lie, aside of the customization menu at the start of the game and the clothes you can equip, you can also go to Reaper Docks and install enhancements. Still, at least having the ability to change your hairstyle would have been nice. Also, it would have been nice to see V's reflection without having to be in front of a mirror pressing a button. Why does V not have a reflection? Why do other characters have a reflection but V doesn't, unless he presses a button in the mirror? They also advertise that we can alter the story in meaningful ways, but in the end result, the amount of change to the story we can make is pretty limited. I even had a mission where the only objective was optional, and I couldn't progress in the game if I didn't do the optional mission. Wasn't that optional after all. Also in dialogue, most options lead to the same result. It's just a false impression of control. You can barely alter the story. For the most part, the story is very much linear. At least you can lead your way to one of the seven different endings. And at least the storytelling is good. The story is unique and interesting. The endings aren't as nice, but up until you get to the endings, the story is good. 
It's not fantastic because you never care for any of the characters, but it avoids some cliches and it manages to tell a story that wasn't already told and overused. It's unique. So yeah, the game is far from what it was advertised. But is it actually good? Yes, it is good. It's a good game. Even with glitches that drag you out of immersion, it's still a good game. You don't have as many options as CDPR advertised, but you still get enough activities to keep you interested for around 35 hours if you play every side mission, or at least 15 hours if you play only the main story. Also praiseworthy is the combat. I like the combination of RPG damage scores and I like how snappy the combat feels. You can also hack stuff while in combat and even before getting into combat, it's better to hack stuff and take down as many enemies with self. So in conclusion, while the end result isn't what was advertised and the game is a buggy mess, it's still a good title. Probably not one you will want to replay or replay more than twice, but still a game worth trying out. Because it's not that bad. It's just too bad that the game is wasted potential. It could have been a really, really good game. A masterpiece. It could have been the game of the decade. But it isn't. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to financially support me in my pursuit to review as many video games as possible, you can do that on Patreon or on the channel's membership section. You will help me a lot. If you want, you can follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord, you have the links to those in the video description. And if you want to see other videos of mine, just wait till I stop talking and terribly thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.